Dissel Watch President Tom Fitton. Tom, uh, you know, I want to begin with the, the major development uh, that we just saw earlier today. A New York appeals court reducing that $464 million judgment to $175 million. It's giving President Trump 10 additional days to post bond. Your thoughts on that? Well, uh, it's well past due that it happened. It's a major blow to Letitia James and the other Democrat politician, Judge Angoran, who, you know, had a nearly half billion dollar a levy they wanted him to have to up, pay up in order just to appeal this unprecedented decision to try to seize his assets and destroy his company. I, frankly, I think 175 is too much, but obviously Trump can handle it. Uh, but it's, it's an indication that even the machine in New York can be checked if you have an honest judge or two. Let's see how much further they go. I mean, on the other hand, you have proceeding this sham prosecution by the Soros-backed prosecutor Alvin Bragg, another Democratic politician. You know, the challenge in New York is it's not just the prosecutors who are elected. A lot of the judges are elected or selected most directly by the Democratic machine up there. And, of course, in my view, they're all dancing to the tune of the Biden administration. Right. Uh, it's, you know, whether it be Fulton County or here in D.C., or up in New York City. I, I've never seen anything like this in American history. We should be concerned when a presidential candidate is being abused by the, like this. This to me is like a human rights violation, the way Trump has been um, abused over the last several years by both first the deep state and now the Biden administration and their Democratic allies. It really is amazing that someone can actually run for office and say, I'm running for office to actually go after this particular individual who I don't have any you know, proof of breaking any laws, but we're going to go after him. President Trump also tweeting on Truth Social about Judge Ingeron refusing to obey the decision by the appellate division relative to the statute of limitations. I, you know, I've seen President Biden sort of ignore the Supreme Court as much as he can on the student loan thing. You've got this tweet about the uh, ignoring the, the appellate division. I'm concerned about this, the pillar of one of the greatest pillars of strength in our nation, and that's our our judicial system. I mean, this lawfare is not just lawfare, but it's even taking down or ignoring certain truths like the Supreme Court that we've had in place forever. Yeah, and you know, there's this anti-Trump animus that's kind of ruining the courts. It's ruining respect for the courts. And uh, in the case of Biden, he's, he's the catch-me-if-you-can approach to governance. He'll do what he can, and if the Supreme Court steps in, he'll stop, then he'll push again. Uh, it's all politics to too many politicians when it comes to the rule of law. And up in New York, I was thinking about what, would, what, what might the business community be thinking here? Is it just limited to Trump? You know, you right. remember the governor was right. trying to say, oh, no, this is all just about Trump, confirming it was an anti-Trump operation. But then uh, Letitia James just sued the largest meat maker or meat producer in the country, uh, pursuing some crazed theory of emissions tied to the company. Uh, so it's all about politics up there. Yeah. And, you know, there's anti-Trump animus. And you can be sure Letitia James is raising a lot of money because of this anti-Trump activity. She doesn't have she obviously has her eyes set on higher office. And I worried other attorney generals are going to start just engaged in political prosecutions in ways that we've never seen before in this country. It just it just feels like what the what you can't get the public to vote for now you're forced through this sort of lawfare or heavy handedness. You know, I just wanted to point out to the audience that the 464 million um, in the last two years, you got Wells Fargo that's fined two billion for abusing 16 million people. 464 million with something with no victims, with no one complained, seems a lot. And we've had these firms, I, all these Wall Street firms, 120 million for mistreating the women who work for them, 140 million for mistreating their customers. I mean, these are actual victims who've had smaller fines. It just feels egregious to your point, and it feels like it's going to, I hope it backfires because this is not what America was built on. Tom, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Charles. Thank you.